floss tube. Welcome back. My name is Teresa. This is the Garden Goose Stitcher floss tube. Number 30. Number 30. And did you know on November 1st, it was like the one year anniversary of me starting this silly little channel. <laughs> it's November 6th, I think, ish. But uh, you know by now. <laughs> Don't trust that. Thank you for coming back. And thank you for all the wonderful comments and um, from last time, I think it's been a week and like two weeks, right? Every other week. I don't know. I went on a trip this past weekend. And so I didn't think about going on a trip in a different time zone, uh, during daylight savings. <laughs> and I stayed up way too late anyway, so it's not like I got much sleep. And so I've been a little discombobulated, you know. You know when in the fall when you fall back and then it's dark at five and you're like, what? <laughs> I hate everything. So a little bit, a little bit like that. Um, we haven't had much going on other than the trip I just went on. Seems like things have been calm. We didn't do anything for Halloween. Nate's didn't go trick or treating. He had hockey practice. He had hockey tryouts. Oh, we had a week of hockey tryouts last week. So every day he had hockey tryouts for the official varsity team. Anyway, he made the varsity team. So um, that, so he made the varsity team. So that was good. And then I went out of town. Nothing else has been really. We've been doing home improvement projects. It's great. I got baseboards, you guys. <laughs> so good. Anyway, uh, so. Everything is, we've had snow, so everything is dormant now, and the garden is sleeping, and I can stitch, <laughs> and and get more house, hopefully more house projects done around the house. Unexpectedly, we're about to redo our, our laundry room. My washing machine died. Oh, brutality. Last Wednesday, I was getting ready to do laundry before I left, and like, on Tuesday night, my washer started acting up, so... I haven't been able to do laundry. We went to the laundromat yesterday. It was like $39 to wash less than a week's worth of laundry. I don't know how people do that. So we ordered new washer and dryer. And um, they should be here on Thursday. So, But while we're taking them out, we should definitely paint, <laughs> put up new cupboards, and, you know, spiff it up a bit, I think. So that's on the docket for this week. Uh I have lots to tell you about my trip to Colorado. I left on Thursday morning, kind of early. I had to end up stay, staying down in Detroit on Wednesday night because my flight left so early. Dave would still be at work, and it's like an hour drive. So he was either going to have to call in sick to work or just rent a hotel room and, and drop me off Wednesday night before he left. It was wonderful. It was so, I, I'm sorry. I love a hotel room to myself, especially if it's a nice one. <laughs> so it was really great. I liked it. And then I, I went to the airport the next morning and flew with my sister-in-law, my local sister-in-law, Dave's, Dave's sister. Um, she does, She's not a cross-stitcher. She wasn't a cross-stitcher when she went left, at least. So she went with me because we're going out to see her sister, Dave's other sister. So, um... So I had been planned this trip and I thought I should invite her out to go see her sister. She could probably just use a weekend away, you know, or, and I'm glad I did because it was nice. So we flew to Denver. Uh, my sister-in-law, Rebecca, picked me, picked us up. We went up to Loveland because the whole thing is, this is how it snowballed. I was like, man, I really want to go to Colorado Cross Stitcher. And I was like, I should go to Colorado Cross Stitcher and then have my, my quilting friends meet me there because I had gone when we lived in South Dakota I had gone down there to stitch with them before so with them um quilting but so, so Rebecca isn't a, in a, it wasn't a cross stitcher either Kristen has picked it up like I hadn't seen her since she picked it up so we never stitched together it was really great so basically I wanted to go to Colorado Strat cross stitcher see my friends possibly convert Rebecca <laughs> so we we got a verbo up in Loveland uh, for a couple of nights, we went to Colorado Cross Stitcher. We s chatted and stayed up too late, and uh, it's always great when Kristen and I get to like catch up in real life. So cause, I don't know. So um, and then we went down to Denver. I was supposed to fly out super 
or like I had a red eye basically for Sunday morning at like one o'clock in the morning. So I hadn't had a hotel room. I think I talked about this last time that it just kept changing. And then eventually I needed a, I needed a room Saturday, Saturday night. So anyway, worked out perfectly. We went to a stitching shop down in Denver, which I, I don't, I have not heard very much about it. There's just like a random picture on the internet. Like there's not a lot about it, but boy, it really knocked my socks off. <laughs> the haul is going to be a bit outrageous. And, um, <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little shocked. I really didn't expect that shop to be so, uh, amazing. So let's talk about what I've been stitching. I have two finishes. One of them I can't show because it's my super, super secret spy project stitching, but praise the Lord. I got that done before I left. So I wouldn't have to worry about it or try to take it with me. I need to finish it this week. I'm trying something new to surprise my dear friend. And so I'm terrified <laughs> because what if I mess it up on a big scale and ruin Christmas, <laughs> but hopefully it'll work out. So that one I can't show. And then we'll talk about the witch next door. I finished, I was, last time we checked in, I was stitching on her monogamously other than working on my secret spy project. Um, but I've been stitching on her most, most all the time. And, um... I finished this cross stitch at 12.05 on November 1st. So I was up on Halloween night because they had um, hockey tryouts and then we just had dinner and settled in. And so I was up until 12.05. Technically it was November 1st and I got it stitched. It's all done. It's beautiful and I do love it. And I, I'm not sure how to finish this. Someone else just posted their finished one on, on Instagram and said, I'm not sure how I'm going to finish it. It is an odd shape. And I thought, oh, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's right. <laughs> I'll keep an eye out. I have, you know, not till next Halloween or October will I want to put, put it out. So finished. So I don't know what that takes my whip total down to because then I also had, I also had to start something. <laughs> so which next door is finished though. And I'm really glad I got to stitch on that. So I started it on the 13th and I finished it five minutes after the 31st. <laughs> so that was a nice project to work on. Oh, and I did start a new project on the 20 Friday. Was it on Friday? No. Listen, I don't know what day it was, but for Kathy's birthday, um, some of us started a birthday start with her and it. I, I showed it as part of my haul last time. It's, uh, stitches by Ethel. So for her birthday sale, she just said anything that stitches by Ethel. And I never stitched anything or bought anything of hers. And I thought that was a pretty little garden mouse in the wheelbarrow. So I started that. I have been, um, I don't think I've talked about this, but, um, I've made some project cards. They're, they're just to keep track of my personal, like, um, floss changes. So I'll try to show them from now on because sometimes people do ask me for my floss conversion. So if you see me flashing one, then you could take a screenshot or, you know, pause it and write it down. But, um, so I, I did convert a little bit because I was just using what I had, but it's really pretty. Like I used, I think I used mostly what she called for, but, but I got this much done. I stitched on it for a day. I think they were zooming. I don't remember what day it was. Was it a Friday? I don't remember. I got almost all of that curl done. I got the wheelbarrow. It's a good start, I think. I think I might, I don't know. I might just put it away. But, and, and stitch on it next spring. That'd be a nice little spring thing. Because it's not really... You know what? I'm really kind of in the mood for Christmas. <laughs> I'm trying to hold off because you know, still Thanksgiving. And I don't have much in the way of Thanksgiving cross stitches. Just the turkey tavern, really. So I started that. So basically, and I started this other one. So basically, whatever I had for whips last time, I still have that. <laughs> I started, I'll put a picture here. I did not print, I did not print the cover page of the um, Santa's, Santa's night tree. Santa's Night Tree for the Liz Matthews class during the Jingle Ball. I did not print the cover sheet because I'm a homeschooler and I'm stingy with my ink. <laughs> but 
but I kitted this up. I did do a conversion. I'll share it with you. So I kitted this up and I got it started. I did a ma massive floss uh, conversion. So I'll hold it up real fast. I am using an 18 count and it's called Christmas night. And when I saw the pattern and it's like a much lighter blue, however, um, I knew I had this in my stash and I knew I was like, oh, that'd be kind of fun to try something really dark. So I pulled my own flosses and I've gotten a small start, but it's actually pretty significant. I think I only stitched on this for like a day while I was watching Christmas movies. The fabric is called Christmas or Christmas night, right? It's called Christmas night. I'm not sure who the designer is, who the dyer is, because it was one of the fabrics I got from stitches and things and she just writes HD hand dyed and then the name of the the name of the fabric so this plaid is actually like really fun it, it's like as soon as I got some of it some of the like good landmarks down I was like oh this plaid's pretty neat <laughs> I actually really do like it so that was a new start and that has a deadline because when's the jingle ball are you signed up? I'm going. And I'm going to take a class. <laughs> so those are my new starts. And I finished. And I've worked on one other whip. That can't be true. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah, that is. I took this with me this week. And I actually took, I took the Queen of the Harvest. I took Feast of Friendship. I took Santa's Night Out. Santa's Night Tree. And... And this is all I stitched on. I don't know why that is. Well, because I ended up teaching, I ended up sh wanting to show Rebecca and Sandy, my sister-in-laws, um, how to cross stitch. I think it's just like such a nice hobby, especially Rebecca is a quilter, but you know, her son plays tennis and she spends a lot of time at practices too. And so I thought, she should learn, right? So I just took this and I spent most of my time um, kind of helping them. I stitched on the plane. I had a really smooth, we had a really smooth flight. So that blue is killing me. I love it so much. And I was really, okay, to be honest, I've been a little bit stressed because I, I had started the house with Weeks Dye Works Twilight. I didn't fill out a project card for this, but I don't think, at least I don't know where it is if I did but um, I had started this and I started worrying about running out of floss. So I ordered two more skeins. And so I started, I've just started it like somewhere down here. And I was very concerned about how much darker it seemed. But now that I hold it up to show you guys, I kind of think it looks amazing. And I like it very much. So it's been going really well. I worked on a little bit of this and then I, I had not much of the house done last time we spoke. Not much of the fill-in, some of the windows, but I got quite a bit of the house stitched. And um, I think I'll spend, I think I'll spend time with this. I'd like to finish it. I just saw Holly, my friend Hobbies of Holly. She just finished hers at a retreat this past weekend. That's probably why I picked it up, because I knew Holly was stitching on this weekend. And she's my friend. And we were styling it. So, um, so I probably will spend some more time with that. I'd like to get that big pumpkin next to it. Like, wouldn't it be nice? To get this done because then I don't know everybody says oh well once you get the house done it'll be easy but then everybody says once they started the urn they realized they underestimated the urn <laughs> so so we'll see but I like stitching on it so okay that's all the stitching I've done now let's move on to haul we're going to start with regular haul. Before I left, I got online and I bought two of the patterns from Chris the Camping Stitcher. The Oh Christmas Tree. I just think this is so pretty. Love those trees. They're so cool. And then I also bought Christmas at the Barn. I just could not help it. Also, I, if you've um, watched um, B&E Stitchery, Brandy and Emma, and then... If you've seen on social media, basically, I'm planning on not buying any patterns in 2024 because I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, and then I bought a whole bunch this weekend. So um, I have so many beautiful patterns that I really do want to stitch and have done. So I'm making a, a great effort 
to not purchase any new patterns in the new year so that I can stitch the things that I do love that are in my stash. I just recently had to buy a second box to hold my patterns in and I thought, oh my goodness, this is so bad. <laughs> I need to stitch these things. They shouldn't be just living in this box. So, so I bet, so then I also feel like I'm like, okay, well, I want this. I, I want it for like soonish, like, and so I bought it. But, and I bought a bunch of patterns when I was at a stitching shop. And I don't really regret it. However, I think that a challenge to get myself to stitch what I have is something that I, I, I want to do. I want to work on it. So, so if you've seen Emma or Missy or myself, and I don't know, a couple other people are, are going to participate. And I happen to know that there might be something to help us with tracking. So basically through 2024, my plan is to stitch what I, the patterns I have. Hopefully I can kit them up with stash. That'd be nice too. And then, um, keep a, keep a running list of the patterns that come out in 2024 that I must have. <laughs> and if January 1st of 2025, I still want every single one of them, I'll just buy them. If I go through my list on January 1st of 2025 and I see, you know what, actually this one, this one, probably probably that was just a knee-jerk FOMO type of reaction that's fine and I do have I do have a fear of missing out <laughs> and so I do buy patterns a lot because of that I go through them every once in a while and sometimes I will weed a couple out but most of them I still really really enjoy so I just need to like be more thoughtful and that's what I'm planning to do in 2024 so there will be I will have a serious list that I take during 2025 and that doesn't mean I couldn't swap with friend like or go to a freebie table or whatever if somebody gifted me one that would be so totally not breaking the rules however in 2024 I'm really excited to try to stitch what I have and in fact I have some 2024 plans kitted up I'm planning to do this is, before I left I started working on my New Year's Eve 12 by 12 plans and the 24 and 24. Now I'm not doing 24 new starts. I probably will, but I'm not planning 24 new starts. I'm planning on 12 new starts, one per month. And I've kid up most of them before I left, which is like a stitch your stash at a girl stitching with the patterns I have. Good job me. You know, like, so it's, uh, I'm really excited about a lot of the things that I have planned for 2024. And I'll, I'm going to have to show those in a different floss too, because otherwise, like, you would be here, like, all day. <laughs> so I'll have to share those in a, another time, The because I did kit up my New Year's 12 by 12, almost all of them. And then I, I well, I kit up 11 out of the 12 of my new starts for 12, 2024, the 12 I'm going to do. And then I almost kit up the magazine starts. Does any of that make sense? Listen, all I mean to say is I got a lot of them kit up, most all of them, <laughs> from Stash. So I'm going to have to share that separate because it's a lot. That's so. Okay, otherwise, so I bought those two patterns from the Camping Stitcher before I left. A couple, like a week or two ago, I don't know, I stopped at a local quilt shop. Nathan and I went to my hometown and there was this really good Mexican restaurant. And we had tacos. It was Tuesday. <laughs> and, um... And then I hopped over across the street to see if they had something. I don't remember what it was for, but they ended up having, they were clearancing out all their DMC and some of them are quite old, but I got this entire bag for like a dollar. So I just wanted to say, yay old quilt shops. And some of them are old dye lots and I kind of think it doesn't matter. Like just as long as I know that that isn't the true whatever, it still might be nice to have like a, you know, a variance on something. So I bought those. My Grace Notes. Don't you love their little stickers? My Grace Notes Mocha Blanc. Back, this is a 18 count. And I'm thinking about, I get the every other month neutral and um, the other, every other month is a colored, like a, a colorful one. This is beautiful pink. My goodness. It kind of just looks like a tan in my, but it really is a pink. Um, I'm thinking about switching to just neutrals because I do find myself 
drawing myself, like I'm being drawn to a lot more samplers and a lot of times I'm going to want those on a neutral. And so some of these really wild um, fabrics that I'm getting in clubs, they're great and I'm sure that I'll find that a use for them. Um, but I think I'd like to really have a good stockpile <laughs> of neutrals. This is my Be Stitch Me from October and it's called Nightshade and it's 16 count and it is beautiful. You can definitely tell this is a very, very pretty color. So those are my two favorite clubs. However, I signed up for a third and I think I'm going to have to, um, break up with one of them <laughs> to keep, if I want to try this one for a couple more, this is millennial fabrics. Um, and I, this is the first time I've got, I've got one. It's a Facebook group page. I think that's the only way to get it. And this, I got the 16 count Ada. I heard about it. I think at lunch at the pep rally, when I had lunch with like, um, Sweetwater and, and, um, Alicia and, and a couple other girls, Jody and anyway, this is called toasted marshmallow. It's beautiful. 16 count. And I love it. So I got, I ordered the next one. <laughs> Let's see. Cause it's kind of, it's kind of like be stitch me where she sends you a, an invoice. And so you could be like now, but I, I like this very much. And I decided I would get another one to see what happens. That toasted marshmallow is beautiful. Hmm non-stitchy stuff I happened to buy you know how I like to make my floss drops and I bought another scrap of paper kit this is the kinds I buy for those um those floss drops I like because they're double-sided scrap of paper and then they come with a, a sheet of stickers on the back for like your planner or whatever so I really really think they're beautiful and they're really nice quality for scrap of paper like better than what you get at Joanne's or Michael's. How is that? When I used to be a scrapbooker back eons ago, like the paper was amazing. And now it's, I don't, like at the box stores, I, maybe they've all gone to like specialty stores. And I got this one too. I think it's a beautiful Christmas one. Isn't that pretty? So I just, every once in a while, I'll just search on, on Amazon and I, I, I like those a lot. <laughs> So that's what I bought that wasn't with the retreat. I have a couple of things that were gifted to me at the retreat. I'm going to show them. My friend Kristen, she gifted me this sweet little um, goose card, like a greeting card. I don't think I'll ever like send it to somebody and I just frame it. She gave me a Colorado pin. I think I might have this made into a needle minder. I think she gave me some color street because she used to do color street and she's still... She used to like set, like be a person, but she gave me some nice for winter. And then she also, okay, I had this set aside because I sent her a message today. She gifted me this super cute little pouch and it's from Leather and Lace and Amazing Grace and a little notepad. And I was looking at it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so familiar. And I was sitting there, I was like, Kristen, I have a project bag made out of this. Because this project bag that I have is made out of that same exact, isn't that neat? So, this is, happens to be one of the Kitada projects. So, um, today when I was getting my poop in a group, I sent her a picture. I was like, see, it matches. So, so she gifted me that. And then my sister-in-law, Sandy, brought some little, little tote bag, like a little pouch. And there's this little coin. Like you put on a keychain and then there's like a little coin with like a sweet little sentiment to like that you can keep with you. And if you just needed like a little moment to refocus, I thought that was sweet. Rebecca gifted us some lotion and chapstick because you know how dry it is in Colorado. Good grief. And so she and she also gifted us this really cool like cut out wood ornament. I thought that was fun. Oh, and Kristen gifted us this, us this too. It's from Missouri Star. I thought that was really nice. I wonder, does she do that? Oh, yeah, it's magnetic. Oh, I just broke it, kind of. I didn't know that. I didn't know that she put a piece of fabric in there. She put a little piece of handmade. Happiness handmade. What was that line? One of the Bonnie and Camille prints. Oh, I didn't even notice that. That's genius. Anywho, so that was fun, even though I broke it. And then after that, I have haul. And I'm going to have to pick take a time out to get it because it wouldn't fit here. 
If you gotta go potty now's the time. I'll be right. Uno momento. Okay. I feel like I'm getting ready for like a but wait, there's more segment on QVC or something like a television show. So when I went to Colorado, I knew I was going to Colorado Cross Stitcher and I was really excited. And I wanted to be really intentional because next year I'm planning on not buying any patterns. And I thought, okay, so I'm not going to go hog wild. And so I specifically took two patterns with me that I want to stitch next year. I intend to stitch them. They're on my plan. And I wanted to kit them up there so that I could still have the enjoyment of like shopping for something, but it was very intentional. This is a habit I need to make forever really, because it was just as exciting to buy something and know that I was going to be using it very soon and that, like, I had the memory of, of kidding it up there. And um, anyway, so I'm glad I did that. And then I bought a couple of things otherwise. And so the haul for this is very tame and unexpected compared to what happened at the other shop. <laughs> So I took Cinnamon Stars. I think that I got this from Missy. She was putting it on the freebie table at Stitch New England. So I took this with me and I picked out a fabric. They did not have the called for. It was like a 25 count chamomile tea. But instead I got Belfast Linen Vintage Sahara. And it's very pretty. Very pretty. See? Very nice. And then I got the called for flosses put them on a ring because there were quite a, a bit but when we were checking out they were very nice about like putting the flosses you had like with the bag in the bag with the floss so you wouldn't get confused very pretty isn't it so I kitted that up I'm very excited about that and then I also took Eleanor Rigby and I do want to do this dark one I think it's there's something very uh, elegant about it the other one the other version is like the baby and, um, does it have a boy and a girl coloring? No, just sweet baby. But, um, so I took that with me and they did have Belfast Linen, um, Weak Dye Works 32 count Confederate Gray and it's beautiful. So I got the 32 count. I do, on both of those, I do like 32 count flannels. If it's soft, I really do enjoy it. So I got the called for, and then I got, they only had, they were missing one of the flosses. So these are the called for, and then they didn't have this one, but I brought, I got a DMC skein just so I could remember that this was the one they did. <laughs> that, so I could remember, like I didn't substitute, this is what I, this is what I still need to get. But actually I think it's Onyx, and I think I already have a skein of that, but I'm not positive. So I'm really excited about that. I think it's going to be really amazing. And then I happened to, they had really nice fabric. Their floss wall, oh, let me tell you about the floss wall. I got a skein of hickory, hickory sticks, hickory ticks. No, <laughs> because, um, because I happen to know I just used like the last strand on the witch next door. And so I wanted to make sure I didn't like have to live my life without any <laughs> or buy it online when I just went to a shop. I also bought um, Lugana. 16, 32 count platinum because I think this is a really great fabric. I wanted to have it in my stash. I didn't have any. So I got that. And then I, I, and I did not take the pattern to kit it up, but I'm planning a Teresa Kogut from that patriotic book. I stitched, um, God shed his light last summer and I'm planning another one. I think it's in God we trust and it's on a red fabric and the only red fabric I had was too pink and so I went thinking okay I want you to get like <laughs> try to get a barn red or like a like a deeper red and I didn't take anything with me and they had two they had one that was a 32 count I think it was an even weave but it was like cherry bright 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 red and I knew I wanted something deeper so I had to get a 36 I know I'm a little stressed <laughs> But it's really pretty. Oh, it doesn't show up at all. It doesn't show up right at all. It's super, super, um, like, rich. It's Aztec Red, Edinburgh Linen, Weak Dye Works. And it's, I wonder if I hold it up against a board, if it would show it better. Where are my boards? Hold on, I'm going to. Um, I wonder if it would show up better, because it really is beautiful. I mean, you can always just wait till I stitch it, too. 
but I like to see what people got and I want it to look right. No, it, it shows it so bright, but it's really like a deep red. Hmm. That's a bummer. I'm so sorry. You'll have to trust me. <laughs> so I got a 36 count linen for that stitch and um, I do like it and I'm sure I could, I'm sure I'll be able to manage it, but I'm a little intimidated. I really couldn't believe I was going to do that, <laughs> but um, I also bought this pattern because I don't know that I've ever seen it before and I do love it. I have a, um, I have a cross stitch right in the entrance of my door, like in my, in my house, my door, our entryway. And we're going to redo it. We're going to build it, put, put it in a bench and stuff. And I want to put like a, a, a different cross stitch in there, but it still says like welcome or like home, sweet home. Or like, you know, I also bought this Colorado cross stitcher pattern. Stitcher, sisterhood of the needle, stitcherhood of the sisterhood of the needle. Sorry, I'm reading backwards. I got that pattern, and I bought the ultimate sampler motifs source book. Also, when I walked in the door, they had mountains of boxes, flat rate, flat rate shipping boxes that they were getting ready. And I was like, is one of these mine? Because I did order the Colorado Cross Stitchers Advent Calendar. And so I walked in and I was like, oh my God, maybe I should close my eyes. She's like, no, you won't be able to see it. And so I was like, okay. <laughs> I got a corner gauge. Just as like a moment. So I have like a shelf that I keep putting all my little things. I got some pins and some Lady Dot Creates. This is rainy. It's really pretty. So I got those. And that was what I got at Colorado Cross Stitcher. So good, right? So well behaved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let me tell you about the floss wall there. I don't think I took a picture of it, but if you go to their social media, everyone, or she has great pictures. So my friend Kristen was buying a couple of patterns and then she wanted to kit them up. And she's never, I don't think she's ever done that in real life. I think she, mostly she's always shopped on online. I think that's true. Anyway, so we were based, we pulled up, pulled it up, and because you can, what was it? Maybe it was something that didn't call for fancy floss. I don't remember now. So basically, it's all on one wall. DMC, co Classic Color Works, Weeks Dye Works, and then Gentle Arts. So we pulled the DMC, then we went and we found the fancy floss for her. And it was like a seamless, seamless, wonderful, fun event. <laughs> I really, really had fun, even though it wasn't my stuff. Um, it was so amazing to be able to pull floss that way. And then we went and put the DMCs back where they all went. <laughs> so it was really great. Um, the staff there was super helpful. And... Uh, I really am glad that we got to go. My sister-in-laws who had, I, Thursday when we got in, we went up to the Verbo and I showed them how to, to stitch. And so, but like, we're talking like a couple dozen. I think Sandy got like 78 because I happen to know the pattern I think had 78 or 76 stitches along the bottom. And that's where her starting point was. Rebecca, I think probably had like five or six stitches in. <laughs> But Sandy ended up buying a couple of things to stitch um, from that shop. And I was like, maybe it's just going to take off. Maybe it's going to work. Like, she's going to take this up. So, so the Friday, no, Friday we went to Colorado Cross Stitch. And then we went antiquing. I'm going to show those at the end. Apparently, this is going to be like a reoccurring segment. <laughs> Antique finds. Um, but Saturday, we, we drove up to down to Denver. And we went to a stitching shop. I've never been there. I've only seen like two pictures of it online. Never even heard of anybody really talking about it much. So I was really surprised when I walked out the door. Like heart palpitations. <laughs> you know, like what? Oh no. So I got the needle minder for their shop. And then, oh God, I don't know where to start. It's obnoxious. They had a lot of little baskets in this one area. A lot of little baskets in this one area with little, with little, little patterns. And I had never, I, so I got this. Deck the halls. So beautiful. I got Brenda Gervais, Summer Salt Dex. Blackbird Design, a bunch of her little smalls, their little smalls. I don't know how old these are. Maybe they're brand new. I don't know. 
feel like they may be falling in the crack of this drawer that I my I always pull out a drawer in my cupboards to stack the the board of stuff to show you. That's awful. <laughs> okay, great. Oh, here's one. <laughs> oh, isn't that amazing? And then I got a. I didn't have this surprised I checked my ad stitch my X stitch app like twice because I was really surprised I don't have that I don't know if I'm gonna stitch it on bright green what other things have you seen people stitch this on please advise okay thanks I also got blackbird design Easter baskets I love that basket holy catfish and that bunny is pretty nice too never seen that where have I been living? Oh, I live in the LNS desert currently. Burn at your base. I I hadn't seen this either. And I don't have many Valentines and I don't I don't see a lot that I like. Like I have one from Emily Call. Maybe two from Emily Call. No, one? I don't know. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm gonna show you the top. The name of it is Manor at Quaker Hill. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I have a wall in the in my bedroom that's completely blank. Completely blank. And I have like a dream of just filling it with beautiful, beautiful cross stitches. I'm going to get started someday. <laughs> they have the Book of Days, so I got the 2024 Book of Days. I'm going to go watch Kia B's. Like some, I was just wondering who has like a really good book of days, like layout recapping or, you know, showing off. And then, um, it just happened to be in her stories was like a memory of her going over hers. And I was like, Ooh, put that to my watch list. I bought this, never seen it before. I thought it was very beautiful. And I, like, it's a, I think it would be beautiful out in your house, like all winter long, like cross seasons but like it's just very simple but beautiful fox and rabbit mm -hmm. elizabeth campbell 1838 i can't read backwards you guys you know that <laughs> hannah ann wallace this is so beautiful oh you can see the wrinkles in the mirror in the reflection everything in there the, everything there was in plastic. They had black crates with hanging file folders in all of these shelves. And it was so much. I think I only pulled out like six crates out of like 30. <laughs> I specifically went to look for Brenda Gervais, uh, Carriage House, uh, Blackbird. I looked through Plum Street. I think that's all I looked through, and I was overwhelmed. I looked through hands, hands across the scene. <laughs> oh, that's so pretty. Little birds. I just love all those little flower baskets and those urns. Oh, Plum Street. I love this, and I think it'd be great to have out all winter, don't you? Like it doesn't just have to be out at Christmas time. Long. Does it say long makes you laugh? Yeah, long makes you laugh. That's like I'm. So we were going through to so going through the boxes, and we'd we'd had to check out of the Verbo up in Loveland. So then, like some of us had eaten, some people didn't get much coffee, and so we were. Um, overwhelmed and my friend Kristen kept saying I think we need to eat I think we need to go eat and then come back or we need to order food and eat in the parking lot and so we asked the, the people that worked there they were very helpful and kind and we said do people ever just say hey hold on to this I'm going to the parking lot to eat something she said yeah and she said there's a great Mexican restaurant down you can just walk there and we went down there and we walked in and nothing was in English at all and I was like oh boy I'm a little nervous because I, I, I don't speak Spanish. I have a D minus in Spanish. I just feel like some people are natural linguists and I am not. And um, so my friend was like, no, this is how we know it's good because 
<laughs> this is uh, it's authentic. This is really pretty. Thankful for the. I love those turkeys. Gosh, they reminded me of the turkeys. <laughs> this one, I Birdie May sampler. I have not seen any of these. Are they old? Oh, 2005. Maybe that's why. Isn't that wonderful? What does it say? Oh, okay. Okay. And I'm not. And Tong Ufindel. Ufindel. Oh, my soul. Oh, I just saw a huge hawk. And it was flashing white so much that I thought it might have a chicken. <laughs> I may edit that out. It's at the, it just flew across the yard and it's at the tippy top of a pine tree there. Anyway, uh, sorry. Uh, this is really beautiful. Gosh, that border. The trees. Ugh. So good, Mary Cornwell. This is the first shop that I've been to that had so many hands across the seas in, like, in one place. And Maria Ewen, the 2023 Queen of the May. This is beautiful. And it's got the Lord's Prayer on it. So beautiful. Beautiful. So like one day when I'm like 89 or 100, maybe I'll have some of these done on my bedroom wall. Isn't that beautiful? Um, and then Flossie's Night Out. There used to be a book that we would read to Nate. It was about snowmen at night. Was it called Snowmen at Night? And it was hilarious. But anyway, I love that pattern. And then I was like, oh, but what would I stitch it on instead? And then I went to their fabrics after we'd had tacos and I found a fabric. So keep this in mind. I'm going to set him aside so you can see it. I also happened to, they had two years worth of this. Apparently this is the 2022, but they also had the 2023. I bought the 2022. It is an advent calendar. <laughs> a fancy one. Isn't that amazing? They had like the next one came in a box. And, um, but I'm really excited about this. It comes with all these little pouches, all label like with numbers on them. A little bit fancy. And then I went through the fabric and I'll insert a picture of the fabric because it was overwhelming. They, they had so many amazing fabric, um, dyers and like in one place and it was well organized. So I got, um, everything else I got was a fat quarter because they mostly just sell by the fat quarter. They used to sell smaller bits, but um, that it, they would end up with weird sizes like this one I bought. But it's really nice because you can say, well, I'll buy this fat quarter, but it's for a project and it only needs to be six by six or something. So they'll actually, you get the whole fat quarter, but they'll also cut it down for you and search the edges so your project piece isn't humongous blanket while you're stitching. What a concept. <laughs> Not me. I'm like, no, I'll <laughs> just but they do surge all the edges for you right there. I got this R and R. This is American Chestnut. They had a odd shaped piece, so I took the big odd shaped piece. It was like six by or seven by thirty. And then there was one other like square, and then there was like some weird stuff. So so I got this really nice piece of American chestnut. It is quite beautiful. Hold on. Part of the avalanche sounds. Is a bad. Okay, so I I kept messaging people and or like and like telling people I felt like a glutton before a fast buying all those patterns, but I also I also I don't know. This is the American chestnut, and it is so pretty, so pretty. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. You're so you're so welcome for not saying the five cuss words that just they came close. That was beautiful. The rest of them are fat quarters. This is uh, Hogs Bristle by Fox and Rabbit. If this is a thirty-six count. Oh, I thought I got thirty-two. That's a, oh, the American Chestnut's a 30. 
that I must have just got a 36 on this on, on accident. Maybe she labeled it wrong. I kind of feel like she did. I feel like everything I got was a 32. I'll have to, I'll have to see. Hogs bristle is really beautiful. Really pretty. Then this is the one I bought for sn the snowman's night out. And then I split it with my friend Kristen because she also bought the pattern. This is Fox and Rabbit 32 count tornado. And so this is the fabric I got for the snowman. Now you think that would be great? Oh my goodness. So I thought, well, I'll kit it up at home and I'll find something, you know, like maybe an aqua or something. But then I found this and I thought, oh my gosh, like it's meant to be. This is um, coloring cut and salt rock 32 count. I bought a lot of 32 count. I really, really feel like I have a really good fabric stash now. And I didn't feel that way until very recently because I I started really focusing on collecting beautiful fabric when I see it. And so that's unfortunate that it happened to be the same week and then I found all those great patterns. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm stocking up. So this is really beautiful. I love coloring cotton. And the fabric is so, so beautiful. This is a coloring cotton white tee, 32 count. So pretty. Isn't it? Oh, it's so good. This is coloring cotton, 32 count. And this is aged paper. Very pretty. Hmm. Isn't that pretty? This is R and R. And it's French roast. 30. See, she's wrong because this says 38, and there's no way I picked up a 38. And it, and I can see the holes. I wonder if it's 28. I think it's a 28 because there's no way I can see the holes pretty well. This is um, French roast, and I swear when I took this out of the baggie, it smelled like coffee. And I was like, oh, it smells like coffee. And then it was called French roast, and I thought, maybe they really do use coffee. The variegation is really pretty. The modeling. Mm. This is... Tea Leaves by Color and Cotton, 32 count. Very pretty. And Color and Cotton, Beethoven, 32 count. I got a lot. Everything is kind of reading a bit pink. I wonder if I shut my, um, my shade one minute. No, it still pretty much shows that way, huh? But it's a very beautiful fabric. And I really, really love it. Gosh, I love it. That's all. That's all. No big deal. Um, I'll be right back with all my antiques. <laughs> Gracious. Okay, so we went antiquing, and I found a couple of things that are sewing related. All of these are intended for sewing purposes and sewing room purposes. So I'm going to share them. I found some really great. Um, antique cards or vin gar vintage cards antique cards those are really pretty I thought I would use them for floss drops I've seen people do that and I thought where do they find them <gasps> sometimes you find honey holes with really pretty pretty <laughs> cards I bought a bunch isn't that pretty somebody has a floss drop that looks just like this but they're cards <laughs> playing cards these ones are really pretty it just reminded me of our um our Springer Spaniel a little bit. So uh, it came in a little box and everything. I feel kind of bad, but I'm totally going to use them for floss drops. <laughs> and these ones are still in the paper, in the package. Aren't they neat? And then these gals, well, these, these two are pretty cute. Look at that. This gal kills me and her little friend. Don't you think they're beautiful? So I got those cards <clears throat> for floss drops. I also found three three flower frogs. Previously I had zero. Now I have three. These are fun. They're about two five inches. And they were like cheap, like eight bucks or something. So these are five inches and they're 
two different shapes. So one is very flat and thick. And then this one, it has like the normal lip and it's it's um, like a, a rounded, mounded. I also found one of the smaller ones. I think this must be a four inch one. It fits perfectly in a milk glass um, urn thingy. I've had one of these forever because everybody makes pin cushions and then they put their little scissors around it. Well, my flower frog fits perfectly. What luck! I also found this. Like right as we were getting ready to check out a little tiny pin cushion. It's like a little baby booty. And I thought it was really sweet. And then I found some cute little buttons that I thought might be fun for some like um, patriotic finishing, you know, like put them on with a little light bulb safety pin. I thought they were pretty, some gold buttons. And then I found some spools. I'd been looking for spools because I, that tree for Santa's night tree, um, her finishing uses a spool and I didn't get the kit. I just bought the PDF um, pattern. So I, for the class, I need to have a spool or some other apparatus to put it in, a flower frog or a spool. And I happened to find both <laughs> in that shop. So I, and then I got them home and they didn't break or nothing. <laughs> Oh, must have been meant to be. So I got those. And that's all. It was a lot of haul, wasn't it? I should have just been wearing my haul y'all shirt because this is basically what this episode was. A little bit of stitching, a lot of shopping, a lot of hoarding. I do feel all sorts of wonderful about having all of these beautiful fabrics in my stash to kit things up throughout the year. Um... I feel like I live in an LNS desert. I can go to Chantel's, but, um, but like this much fabric in one place, what would you have done? What do you do when you hit the mother load? Please tell me. Okay. Like, but if you hit the mother load and you have an, an, a ginormous stash at home, that's one thing. Like, I didn't buy any, like, 18 count or anything because I know I have a lot from all my clubs and my previous acquisitions. However, I didn't, I just started to really dip my foot into the 30, 32 count linen. And so, like, I was like, it's a honey hole. Like, I hit the mother load there. What would I have done? Bought one? Bought two? But there were so many. How could I decide? <laughs> so now I have such a great collection. <laughs> I have a fantastic fabric stash in every, every count now that I feel comfortable. I only have 136 and I feel like, you know, I'm going to be cautious on that front. I really think that, that other one that I bought was mismarked, but we'll see. I have all of those kitted up projects for my plans for New Year's Eve and, and 2024. Pam's doing the 24 and 24. I'm not going to, okay, technically I'm doing 24 and 24 because I'm starting magazine starts. 12 of them. And then I have one new start plan for each month. But, um, so I'm, I'm excited about all of those that I got kit up with like a hundred percent stash. I think I have a list with hardly anything <laughs> like a, a DMC. Like there's like a, a yellow that I didn't have or something, but, um, I'm really excited about that. And I'll have to check in with that with you about those later. Maybe, maybe do an extra. Because I'm really excited about it. I hope that you've been getting excited about 12 by 12. If you went and watched Kia's um, YouTube or her floss tube about that. And it's just really exciting. Because I have had, I went through some old magazines. Some of those were from 1983. One of them, my oldest one was from July, August of 1983. And I was born in July of 1983. <laughs> so... <laughs> Some of, some of them are as old as me <laughs> and I ended up going through some of the magazines and some of them I went through and I couldn't find a single thing I really wanted to stitch. So guess what? They were purged. So I'm kind of happy about that too. Like that was a, a great feeling. So, so I'll check in with, the, with you about those plans separately. I have no plans other than stitching on my jingle ball class piece and I'll probably keep um feast of friendship out for a bit 
Maybe I could finish it. Wouldn't that be a huge project to finish? I think I'll work on that. I have some, like every weekend now, from now until Christmas, there's Hallmark Christmas movies on every weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I think in a couple of weeks, won't it start to be, there's like two per night? On us. There's a lot of stitching is what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, I don't think I have any new starts planned, and um, I'm really looking forward to next year accomplishing a lot of whip finishing. And I feel like I feel like I have a grip on my whips, even though I just started doing new things. But I feel I really do feel like I have a grip on my whips because I was kidding up these twelve things I'm going to start on New Year's Eve, twelve by twelve, and I thought, do I want to start twelve new things? But most of them are small. Um, and, and I really do love 12 by 12. I think it's just such a great, it's like a final hurrah for the year, you know? So I don't, I do want to stitch. I want to do starts that night. So that's all. That's it. I have, um, some planning I want to get done doing, get to doing before December even starts because December goes by fast for me. I feel like every year when I plan my planner in December, I don't get to. So I'm going to start this month really setting up my planner for 2024. I have, I bought a faith place, faith based planner from Caliba design. I'm really excited about that. I bought that, I bought the, um, what was it called? <laughs> I don't know. I got planners I want to get situated. What the heck? D Book of days. <laughs> oh, anyway. And I'll be home from now on until, until beach, please. I'm going to be home. So that's like a lot of weeks. <laughs> Is that like 12 weeks that I'll be home straight? So more than that. That's a lot of weeks. I'll be home steady all those weeks. So I'm really excited about that. We had thought about going on a little, um, anniversary trip, but I just want to be home. <laughs> just want to be home. We have a couple of hockey trips though. So I have to find balance, but so plan on seeing an extra with my plans, I guess is what I'm going to say. I have a lot of, little, I have a stack kitted up and I'm excited. And I, I want to say thank you so much for checking in and thank you for all the kind comments. I, a lot of you, I think follow me on Instagram now, and I love the interaction that we have in the comments over there or messages. And, um, and I of course love all the comments that you guys leave here. I just appreciate all of you and you're so kind and, and it's so humbling to have so many friends that leave me messages and like keep track of what I'm doing and how much trouble I'm getting into. <laughs> And I really appreciate all of you. And, um, I, like it's been a year and I cannot even imagine that I did this once, nonetheless, 30 times. And, you know, so don't forget if you want to follow me on Instagram, my name, I'll put it down in the description box, but it box, but it's Teresa McMath zero one. There's no H in my name. So that helps. <laughs> I'll put it down below though. So you can, so you can do that. And I just want to say thank you again. I appreciate all of you. So if, um, yeah, I got to put all this stuff away <laughs> to find new homes for all this stuff I just acquired. But, um, I just, if you haven't found your stitching community, can I just for one second, um, encourage you to step out of your comfort zone, comfort zone, find a Panera stitching near you, sign up for a retreat. Um, whether it's nearby or far away, pick a, pick a destination you've always wanted to go to and see if there's a retreat nearby. Probably there is. Um, I just really feel like, um, I'm very happy in my life. I live a very simple life and then I go on retreats and I buy, I have these grand adventures and, um, but finding your people is so important. It is such a game changer. And I feel like humans used to be more interactive with each other with stuff like this, like crafting and, and, um, and now we've all just sit in our houses <laughs> watching floss tubes too, <laughs> but, and I do it too. And I do love that as well. But in, in real life interaction, sometimes 
can be more fulfilling than they are terrifying to start off with. Does that make sense? Like it's absolutely intimidating to reach out or try something new or go meet new people. And, um, like the reward for finding a group of people that, uh, are, are amazing <laughs> is like way, it way, um, over, overweights the, the fear of stepping out and, and trying something new. I just want you to find your people in real life as well, right? Because we have all these great friendships on, on social media and we love watching our floss tuber friends. I feel like I'm, in, I'm involved. <laughs> I'm invested. <laughs> but um, I really hope that you have such a group in real life that you can get together with because I just know that it, how much it's worth. So um, that's all. That's it. I'll see you. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll plan to do the, the project parade next week and then I'll have a normal floss tube at my normal schedule. So thank you for stopping in. Thank you every, every one of you, honestly, I appreciate you all and happy stitching friends. Bye-bye.